Hey, what's up? So I'm going to show you how we can fetch some data from an API using Thunks. So I'm assuming that you already know how to deal with Thunks and you know what they are and use them in the normal Redux setup. So this is our current state. We can add a to-do. We can delete one. And these are the actions. Uh, very simple. And this is our slice. This is the name. As you can see, it will be displayed here. Then forward slash the action which has, which has the same name of the reducer. Very simple and really simplifies the stuff. And to fetch data from a place or to show you the thunks and how we can deal with them in the Redux toolkit, I will be using this API. It's free. You can get some data from here. So go to this URL, then posts. This will return 100 posts. So let's try to fetch this and store it inside our store. I will create a new feature to do this, and I already have this folder. Yeah, you just create a folder called posts inside your features folder and create two files. The first one is the component, that's why it's in Pascal case. And the second one is the posts slice to JavaScript. So this should be fast, the first couple of steps. So from the toolkit, import the create slice and create the slice. So const posts slice will be equal to create slice and pass to it an object. Name would be posts initial state. I will have an object with a list. This will be an array. I will store all the posts here and status. This will hold the HTTP status when it's pending, when it's uh, fulfilled and all of that. So uh, as you remember in our to-dos, we have the reducers, but the reducers that will be activated from a thunk from or from a, an actions that have been dispatched from a thunk they will be added in a key called extra reducers and let's continue that continue with that we need a thunk so first thing we will have the create asynchronous thunk we will import it and I will create a thunk called get posts and I will export it and that, this accepts two things. The first thing is the type, the action type, the, the, the one that's been displaying here. So usually what they do, they will have the same name here. Then forward slash the name of the thunk, like this. And the second argument is the asynchronous function. And you need to return something from here. Or you, yeah, you need to return anything from here. So I'll return the returned value from the fetch API, and I will go to this link, paste it here. Now, to then, sorry, I will convert the response to JSON or reformat, and this the JSON actually returns a promise. So all of, yeah, it it returns a promise. Uh, it's not relevant, but just wanted to say to so. To tell you that um, yeah and the next step is that this thunk will dispatch two actions uh, at most the first one is pending so when you dispatch it it will immediately dispatch uh, a pending action and to handle that pending action we will do the following so add brackets to have a dynamic key so get post pending, and this will be the reducer that will handle the pending action that will be dispatched automatically from this thunk. Okay, and just it's just like a normal reducer. We have our state, we have our action. What I will do, I will have state dot status equal loading. So we might display a a loader on the screen or something. The next action that uh, might be dispatched from this thunk is the fulfilled action this one this this thunk returns with no errors and this will accept the state and the action and I will distract from it from the the payload so state dot list will be equal to payload and state dot status will be equal to success uh, yeah 
of course you can remove this uh, I'm pretty sure you know you are yeah pretty sure you know the last action we need to handle is our rejected action and this should this will be just like this but the status will be failed and that's pretty much it so let's now do or let's now export our post slice dot reducer so let's export the reducer that will be generated from this so yeah but before we continue let's just recap this is the thunk and each thunk will dispatch at most two actions I mean by default of course you can modify that but by default it will dispatch two actions pending when you call it fulfilled when it's run without errors rejected when something throws an error inside of it so yeah and you need to handle oh you don't need but you might want to handle these three so I'll do it like this uh, really simple and of course you can put these in another file and import them and all of that and this is what I usually do I don't put everything here but uh, yeah you can do that it's really simple um, I know that anyone watches this is not a beginner so they can do that on their own so we need now to import the reducer here in our store so this will be the posts reducer and from the from posts then post slice and this would be post reducer posts so let's go check our state we should see that we have this posts and with empty list and a status of null which is nice so we will dispatch this thunk in the posts component uh, if you know about in, in Redux, we usually has in, without any configuration or extra configuration, we have only ty action types as an object containing the type and the payload. Uh, and the payload, of course, is optional. But you can extend this by allowing Redux to accept uh, functions as an actions, and these are thunks. And this is an example of it. So we will dispatch this like this dispatch get posts and this actually returns a function and it will be handled by Redux and if you remember in the in the normal Redux without extra configuration or sorry in, in the normal Redux you won't just put this configure store and uh, continue you will need to add the middleware and stuff like that and configure the thunks uh, the Redux thunk and you need also to install it uh, but as you can see we we don't have the redux thunk here everything is handled by the, the redux toolkit which is very nice so this is actually it we don't need to configure anything more than this which is nice so let's create this I have an extension so when I type react func rs fc to recreate this component for me this is the extension uh, if you want to install it maybe so I like to have my I have I like to have uh, only functional components in my application so I'm going how to I'm going to show you how we can uh, dispatch the, the this thunk only one time without repeating ourselves yeah I'll, I'll show you the issue then I will fix it without just speaking so yeah import from react Redux the use dispatch of course we will have the dispatch function and let's import our thunk from the post slice the get post thunk let's just let's just dispatch it let's return here maybe h1 like this uh, posts okay so since this is exported let's go to our app to just let's import it here maybe and go to posts then posts and I will put it here so refresh the page you should see that we have two pending actions and two fulfilled actions which is uh, not good and each time this component will be uh, re-rendered 
as you can see since we wrote it like this uh, this action will be dispatched again and again so let's try to add anything as you can see uh, uh, that this is not good and look at the network tab we sent this request too many times uh, if you leave this if you leave it like this this might cause uh, a memory leak so I'll show how we can fix it using the use effect hook from react so use effect pass to it a callback function and inside of it dispatch the funk and to make it only run one time so let's see what will happen like this so refresh as you can see we have it one time uh, it's still the same issue right so we can tell it to only run it only when the dispatch value have been changed so you will put it as an array here this is called dependencies so when the dependence is changed, this will be executed again. So now this will only run one time. This is the first time. It won't run again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you know about this, but uh, just this is a cool trick. So this is the response, 100 posts. Let's go to our Redux. We should see that we have pending. The status have been lo is loading at that state. So we can maybe show a spinner. Then if we failed, we have our list of 100 posts and the status is success. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Each thunk will dispatch uh, or can dispatch the actions, uh, the pending, the fulfilled, the rejected, and you will handle them in the extra reducers uh, property in this object. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it's really simple. I think uh, the, next, the next step in your application you might need to pass some stuff to this function and to do it uh, you can do this because only the first argument will be passed here at the first argument here so my recommendation is only to pass an object I will put maybe limit uh, is 5 like this so yeah these func functions when you dispatch them they will only accept one argument and I highly recommend that you put an object so you can pass, pass multiple values. So this will be the, his, this object. And uh, the second argument, this will be passed by the toolkit. And this will, this will be an object. And from it, the, we, have so, uh, we have some useful functions. One of them is the dispatch function. So we might from here dispatch any action we want. And sometimes you want to do this. And usually what I do after the response have returned with no errors, I will put then maybe dispatch some action. Uh, like, like here as you can see. Maybe I will dispatch something like this. Or on, on case of catch. Yeah, I will leave this just as a reference for you. Another thing you might need is the state itself. Maybe in the when I fetch the posts, I need some information from my to do, uh, from my to do list uh, reducer, so we can get the get state function, and this actually will be the whole state, not only this state for this slice. No, no, the whole state. So we can actually get the to dos as you can see. Like this, I will show you and I will log it just to prove it to you. Um, I think yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. Now let's just use this thing here. We passed an object with a limit, so let's destruct that. I will convert this to template string. I will put the query param here, like this. So uh, let's go and see this in the console. So first thing, as you can see, our to-dos is empty. I, I, think, I don't think I can show this to you. Maybe if I have, yeah, by initial state, I can have maybe something like this. ID one txt, let's duplicate this. 0, 2, 0, 3, 
So refresh. As you can see, this have been logged from our thunk, from this thunk, from this line. Okay. Yeah, just I just I want to show you that you can access the state. Maybe you need it to send the data or something. You don't need to like connect everything. Uh, they did they do a pretty good job uh, on that. Yeah, I'll just comment this. I will leave it as a reference for you and these two. And as you can see, our network uh, request. Let me go to it only returned five because we sent in the query params to have limit of five which we pass from here so i think that's it that's it uh, for the redux toolkit this is the basics and this will make you build uh, really fast uh, redux applications or fast i mean by time you will build it in a fast uh, time in a faster time than just configuring your own redux um, yeah that's pretty much it uh, I hope this was useful and uh, I'm still learning this library my, my, on my own and when I learn something interesting or something new or something I didn't show you here I will definitely do a video about it and uh, yeah I really liked it I highly recommend that you check it out and um, yeah bye thank you